All right, let's get started on this little challenge here, letting Ken get hit by the fireballs. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to handle just Ken getting hit and deciding how much damage to come off. Remembering we're trying to set this up so that if he's crouched, he takes no damage. If he's in the process of firing, he takes double damage. And then every other position is just normal damage. So let's go to object player. Let's add a hit by fire object. Remember the fireball is what Ken throws, fire is what's coming at him from the tower. Now when he gets hit by the fire, basically we get to ask a couple questions. And uh, remember we had different sprites. And I'll just pop here quickly. We had had our sprites of zero for standing, one for kicking, two for fire. So that's one of them we're going to do double damage. And four for crouching, no damage. So two and four are the special ones. So let's do here. Whoops, hit by fire. Let's ask a question here. Let's say if his state is four, which was crouching. Well, nothing's going to happen. Okay. Else, if state is two, which means he was firing, I'm going to make the hit points. Whoops equals global dot hit points. I'll make it 10, right? That was double. Now, if you're wondering why we made this one global, it was just to sort of show you that I don't want Ken to keep track of his own hit points this time. Just I'm going to let that global object keep a master ownership of that variable. Okay, global this time around. Okay, so it's only because I created it globally in the globs object. Now, the thing is, every other state, no matter what it is, right? Four was nothing, two is something. Every other state, I'm doing the same thing. Global.hp is global.hp minus five. And that's it. Now, in all of these situations, I have to make the explosion. So what I'll do is I'll come back in a minute. I haven't made this object yet. But I still have to add the explosion, right? No matter what state he's in, he's just got hit. I'm going to make that explosion pop up. Okay, so this should be okay. And I guess I should do this. Let's not forget. With the other object. Instance destroy, right? We have to destroy that fireball. Okay, let's go take care of our explosion object before we test this out. Now for our explosion object, first we have to do is let's go get the sprite. So let's create a sprite. Sprite explosion. I'm going to go straight to edit and straight to create from strip. Now here's the explosion. That's a good one to use here. It's a little over the top, but you know, it's the basic principle will be fine. Okay, you can count the pictures here. Five, 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 five. So I have 25, five per row. These squares, by the way, are 16, I think. So if I do 64, 64, one, two, three, four times 16. Perfect. It's a nice rigged sprite sheet. Works beautifully. I've grabbed all of them. Okay, zero, 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 zero. Let's give it a little test. Not bad. And we'll fiddle with the speed, you know, depending what speeds you have. We'll fiddle with the speed in the actual game. All right, our sprite looks good. Let's center it. Done. Let's make that object for the explosion. Object explosion. And I don't know how fast it's going to be, but let's just do this. Let's say when I'm created, I'll set my speed. So when that explosion object gets created, Let's set an image speed here, and I'm just going to take a guess. I'm going to say image speed 0.8. Okay, we can always go back and switch that around. Plus here, if you wanted to make it bigger or smaller, you know, I could set the X scale to half and the y, y scale to half as well, right? Depending on how big or small you want that explosion to be. Now, 
let's make that explosion object. Oh, one more thing, you're on the explosion object. When its animation ends, other, animation end. This is a convenient time, especially for explosion type objects. As soon as their animation ends, get the object to destroy itself. Okay, and then it's gone. So it gets one run through the sprite and then done. Okay, so that's a nice example with the explosion there. All right, let's go back to the player. We had left that one little bit at the bottom. Make the explosion. So let's take care of that. I'll just call it E. Instance create. Explosion. Now it's not moving. So you don't have to say speed is zero. It's just going to have a speed of zero as it is. So really that's it. Make the explosion object. If you wanted to here, you could have done this. Image speed is 0.8. But we already did that in the create method. Okay, either one works. Okay, so that should be it. If I've thought of everything, and if we haven't, we'll see some sort of error on the screen. All right, looks good. Let's test this out. Okay, I'm going to get into a block position. Now, I'm not seeing my explosion sprite, so we'll, I think I know why. I didn't assign it yet, but notice no damage. I'll stand up, taking five, and let's try to fire here. Middle of firing, I'm losing 10, so it looks like it's working perfect. Okay, and the punches, I just lose five, so that's good, so... It seems to be working. Now, why am I not seeing my awesome explosion object here? Probably because when I made it, I made the sprite, but I never assigned it. So let's just go get that explosion there. And let's see this nice over-the-top explosion when I'm hit. Now, one thing we didn't mention before you see the explosion is occurring underneath Ken. And you'll also notice the explosion isn't happening right there. It's happening at the center of Ken. I'll show you those two quick fixes right now. Little bonus commands. The first one is, is when we get hit by the explosion, I'm making the explosion at XY. I'm coding inside of object player which means the explosion is going to be at the XY of the player. What you might want to change here is you could say other.x, other.y. And you know what? We should really destroy after if we're going to do that. So make the explosion wherever the explosion hit or wherever the ball hit. Then we destroy it. So that's number one. The other one here is where the explosion should be. There's actually one variable we haven't talked about yet that's built in. It's called the depth of the sprite. Depth is how close to you, the viewer, or how far away from the viewer an object is. And so if you want the object to be on top of everything else, you actually make the number negative, like negative 10. Even closer to me would be negative 11. Even closer, negative 99. Even closer, negative 999. By the same token, you can make things get far away by making the variable positive. So those of you that have worked in a program like Photoshop where there's layers, depth is basically the layers of the graphics. So since I want this to be close to me, I'll just try a number like negative 10 for now. This should bring it forward so that when it draws itself, it's close to me. Now let's see how this looks. And we get the explosion on top. Now if you think the explosion is a little bit too far away, obviously you could fiddle with the X and Y, like you could say minus 20. It's going to bring it a little more to the left. So you can do a couple little fiddles in there. But this isn't a bad example of Ken getting hit and a nice control depending what state he's in. 
of his sprites. Okay, he takes certain damage. All right, hopefully you got that one on your own. We'll see you in the next video, which is going to deal more with sprites and drawing and things you can do in the draw command with the sprites. Thanks for watching.